Hi guys, this is Jamie with gettingcrafty.net. That's gettingcrafty.net. We're here to create together and a little bit of basics of stamping. We're gonna be featuring some really fun techniques in coloring in the next few videos. So hopefully this excites you. This is a really beautiful, brand new, limited edition designer series paper right here. And it's called Pleased As Punch, item number 153. Sorry, 153558. And it's a wonderful collection of paper that's double-sided, designed to match our punches, like the umbrella punch here, and our heart punches with the great gingham behind it, the little flower punch that's free during celebration with this beautiful rainbow sheet behind, the tulip punch that is coordinated with this beautiful green striped distressed paper. It's absolutely perfect, but when you have a paper that's fitted like this, but you have a punch that is not fitted like that, that looks like so, how do you go in and punch out just these individual pieces? Well, this is how I do it. I fussy cut around with a pair of paper snips my designer series paper, just like so. And I wanna make sure I cut off that handle, but don't get rid of it because I'm going to use them. Then, if you're like me, you probably have scraps laying around the house. Um, you can cheat a little bit. Sometimes the images are easier than others. Stick it in, but once you get it inside, you're fighting the other positions and you're trying to get it where you want. And that's pretty good, but I really want to have it perfect. I find that's easier with a larger umbrella piece. You can even use your take your pick tool and grab the gummy piece and kind of move it around. Easy peasy, right? But if you were to try to do this piece here, you might have a bigger challenge. Or the um, little guy. So look at how it gets kind of stuck in jammied. I hate that. So using my scraps instead, I'm gonna take this little um, umbrella, put a little dash of snail adhesive. That stands for simple, neat, affordable, inline adhesive. And a scrap of Whisper White cardstock. Just something I had laying around. I'm gonna place it into the holder and the punch, and we're gonna punch it out. Let's take a look here as you guys zoom in. You can see we're gonna place it, do a par punch just like so, and then squeeze, boop. And of course, I'm gonna just get rid of this stuff over here. I'm not getting rid of my scraps because I know I will be using it. Let's just be clear. And I'm gonna make sure there's no paper on the back of this. Right there. I'm gonna set aside this really pretty card and we're gonna create it in just a moment. Now we're gonna utilize this beautiful Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Stampin' Up! offers it. I store it in a wood mount case. So this is a case from Stampin' Up! I absolutely love it. I have a tendency to store things on my bookshelves so I can see what this is right here and it also prevents my corners from being damaged and my paper from being wonkied. Um, it's easy in my stamping for me to bend paper because you know, it's not hard. <laughs> so this is a great way to store it. These are one of those tools I use a lot for organization and storage on my stamping. We're also going to feature the absolutely stunning, we're gonna use one of my favorite stamp sets in the main catalog called Silhouettes, Silhouette Scenes. That's item number 149223, 149223. We all have a child at heart. If there's children in our lives usually, there's a couple that we could celebrate, or there's just dreams that we might have of any or all of the above. The greetings alone are fabulous in the stamp set. Because it's a, a, bat, it's a silhouette scene, you want that black image to be pretty crisp. I'm gonna use my Stamparatus. Stamparatus is one of my favorite placement tools. After a car accident, I lost some nerve damage in my hands and then we had a, I had suffered an attack by my um, large dog. And so my hand nerve has a tendency, tendency, to, tendency to shake. So um, I use my Stamparatus as a way to get around that. Now I've already placed this where I lined it up to my Stampin' Up! logo right down here. Taking my magnet, which I've wrapped in washi tape and left a little flag, now this is a super strong earth magnet. I absolutely love it. Because we're gonna have a watercolor background, I'm gonna utilize the Stays On ink pad. Why also, it smells like almonds. <laughs> I'm a scent-oriented girl. 
And actually, after the car attack, I lost, I mean, car accident, I lost um, the ability to eat nuts. It was one of the side effects, believe it or not. My doctor informed me that you can develop allergies after something traumatic. Who knew? Now, you can see this is a gorgeous image, but I really want to darken it up. So, I'm going to go in and give it a good inking. over and over. Now a person's natural inclination is to push hard on a stamped image and that doesn't work with your regular ink pads or stamped images because you will get that funky line around your greeting or your stamp. But using a stamparatus and the great, it comes with a little foam pad, it, you know, it's perfect. Um, this will allow me to not have to worry about that aspect of it. Now we're going to go ahead and utilizing this really fun umbrella, you can see that it's longer than the current umbrella by a little bit, but I'm gonna wanna use it. So I'm gonna take a slight, small pencil, light pencil, fine tip pencil, and I am not pressing hard. I'm literally just doing a little line, just a little one, just like that, boom. So this is going to tell me where I'm placing my stamped image, but it's also going to help me create a mask. So using the large sticky note, just like so, I'm going to take this sticky note just to the edge of my umbrella. Here, you really want to just kind of, you can even do it backwards, watch this. You just want the edge of the umbrella. Like so. Up, up. Sure. Right here. And we're going to place that umbrella back where we had it. Like so. And you want it to be relatively straight. Hmm, that's not going to be straight that way. I want it to mimic his back. So I'm going to use it. And that's the great thing about this. Guess what? You have these lines that really does help you to see where to place it. And what we're going to do is using our paper snips, which I just put back, we're gonna cut it along the umbrella like that. And we're gonna go straight down. Now, do you have to be perfect? You do not. Now we have our umbrella relatively where we want it. Make sure you're looking for your pencil line. Can you see the pencil line shining through right there? So I'm gonna move the umbrella down a smidgy, like so. And place your sticky note on nice and firm, and then remove your umbrella. Boop. And if it's crooked, guess what you can do? It's not so hard. You just have to go back in and straighten it out. I'm just eyeballing, am I supposed to be perfect? No. And it's okay if I'm going over the edge of the umbrella, just a smidge. There you go. Now it's like rainbow, a waterfall, however you wanna look at this gorgeous card, it's super easy to do. You don't have to be crazy about how it looks though. Imperfection is actually where it's beautiful. Now we're gonna use our watercolor pencils today. I store my watercolor pencils. We have two collections. Um, I store them in a wood mount case with a blender pen, an aqua painter usually, and a um, pencil sharpener. I remove the package when it comes. I remove the bottom half here, but I leave the flap so that when I see my colors, they're like so. I store them in a case so that they go on my shelves and I can find them easy. Again, I can lose anything in a matter of 2.5 seconds. And then it stores beautifully. These wood mount cases are a must have for any crafter who wants any sort of semblance of, of organization. Did you notice I said semblance? We're crafters, we're not necessarily the most organized folk. Now, in order to utilize this, this was featured, a, friends, a couple friends of mine, Jackie um, recently did, and Pip and um, Pam, they all were working with rainbows recently and I thought how fun it would be for us to create a rainbow scene. In Southern California, we don't generally get rain. 
like not a lot. So I wanna make sure I use this. I'm gonna pull out the colors I wanna feature. I'm using my, uh, and the nice thing is they're numbered and they coordinate with the design up there. We're gonna use the Daffodil Delight, the Pumpkin Pie. We're gonna use the Melon Mambo. We're gonna use the uh, Bermuda Bay and the Pacific Point. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You don't have to go crazy with this. Now we can go um, straight up and down. This was at a beautiful angle and I'm kind of I'm leaning towards sticking with that just for today. And maybe another design. I'm gonna sit down to create the rest of this. So hopefully you can hear me just the same. Now I want to start with the lightest color first. I'm gonna use the side of my pencil and I'm gonna go off. Now you can throw, um, let's just do this. It's probably easier than grabbing my grid paper real quick, but you can go off. And I like the lightest to be the center point of the stamp. I'm avoiding these streaks. So I'm gonna go in and very lightly color in right around here, this image. Now I'm gonna kind of carry it through like so. Am I perfect? Hardly. But don't ask my kids. They think I have eyeballs in the back of my head. I remember thinking my dad did as well. I homeschool my four youngest kids. So this is one of those things that I love doing is educating. It's actually, I wanted to be a teacher growing up and my uncle who was a professor and discouraged it because he didn't like the way the school district treated the teachers. Um, and so he never told me no in my whole life. My uncle is my biggest, one of my biggest advocates. Actually, a lot of the family members are. It's all about encouraging one another. So um, that's our Daffodil Delight. And then we're gonna go into the next color, which will be our pumpkin pie. And I'm gonna go down on that one, maybe to here. And let's fill her in. Soft, soft and the side of your pencil. You don't wanna use the tip. You wanna discourage those stiff lines. It's a rainbow. You want that softness. You wanna go in. The watercolor paper is thicker, so it's really fabulous for that. Like so, kind of fun. Now we're gonna go into the Melon Mambo. Oh, and we will eventually also use the Rich Razzleberry. So let's go down in here. Again, soft. So I found that Stampin' Up! really gave me the opportunity to have that niche of teaching and creating and inspiring others. But also I am blessed to homeschool my four youngest kids. We have a small farm of Nigerian dwarf goats here in California. And I'm gonna just capture a little bit of the pink over here on the corner. Now building out the color, we're gonna go to the Bermuda Bay, just like so. Remember the side of our pencils, we don't wanna press hard. We also don't wanna exhaust our hands. Um, after the car accident, the more exhausted or stressed my body is, the more inclined I am to shake. So um, it also adds to the stress of my body for the rest of the day. We're all linked and connected, right? And you wanna blend softly into the next color. You don't need a ton of color because this watercolor paper being thicker and cotton will transfer that color and smoothly blend it out. So you can see I'm just blending it a little bit straight here. Right there. Then we're gonna go in with the Pacific Point. This is a very bold and beautiful blue. Side of the color pencil. Do not press hard, the color is designed to transfer on its own. This is very soothing for a stressful day. I mean, it's just, for me, the beginning of the day, and I had a very busy day, busy day yesterday. I, my children and I, we serve um, with our church, the homeless people and the people in need in our community. And so usually we work with our men's ministry and the leadership of our church, but my kids and I headed up ourselves up yesterday. So um, we cooked for a hundred people um, pasta, which is easy because I'm married to an Italian. 
I'm Scottish and I love food, <laughs> Scott and German. Um, and so my children even know how to make pasta. They've been doing it their whole life. There you go, go in and really softly blend. This is the rich razzleberry. And you can turn your pencil periodically if you're wanting a little bit more rich color. There you go. As it is, it's really quite lovely on its own. Now, I'm gonna put this away. Do you know why I'm putting it away right away? I can lose anything in 2.5 seconds. And I am dead serious about it, y'all. I can put it down right next to me and lose it in minutes. Boop. Now, we have our sticky note here and it's absolutely fabulous. We're gonna grab our aqua painters. Now, I've just filled this up today with, it comes in a two pack of our aqua painters and I filled it up with fresh water. You wanna periodically clean out your aqua painters and get a new um, collection of water inside. Now, usually I tell you if you're water coloring, you don't need a ton of water. This section, you really do need a little bit more than you think you might. And the nice thing is our watercolor paper can absorb it. We're gonna start with the lightest color and that would be our Daffodil Delight and blend it in. See, I'm using the side of the aqua painter just like I did before. And I'm going into that orange with that pumpkin pie and right into that pink. Just like so. Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna come over here and do this side as well. Starting with a daffodil. And I'll go down into the um, warmer colors down here initially. So I'm highlighting this here and I'm gonna, you can keep blending this color. Usually you would clean in between colors, but I want the two colors to blend. This is the pumpkin pie. Go in, soften those streaks out. You can do waves of this. You don't really need to. It does the work itself into the melon mambo. Just like so. Now we'll rush through the other colors, but I'm gonna blend out the other way. So what I will do is I'm gonna blend that into the orange of the pumpkin pie with the melon mambo. And you can see I'm trying to remove any harsh streaks that are tied to this project. Just like that, there's a little line right there, boop, boop. Okay, so I'm going to continue to color and I'll start with the daffodil and I'll work my way into the Bermuda, the Pacific Point and the Rich Razzleberry. And I'll do that really quickly. So hopefully you saw how I blended out those colors and I even took a little bit of that Rich Razzleberry up there and added a dash to the bottom. Now I can clean my aqua painter in between. You'll see there's a little bit of color transference to there. So you can just color till it's clear. That's your big guess. Now, um, this is the wow moment. Are you ready? I know it's like magic. So drum roll, please. Brrr, look how pretty she is. Ah, my kids were referring to my son's learning how to drive. And so I kept referring to my car as a she and he was like, why? And I explained because she does all the heavy lifting. <laughs> Maybe that's just me in the house. I don't know. Uh, now our watercolor paper will take a little warping as it dries. You can see it absorbs through as you've gone across the edge. You can see the stamped image. It wasn't even wet, but it is nice and sturdy. So give it a second to dry. Oh shoot. Look what I just did. And let it dry. Remember that. So let's go ahead and blend out some of that happiness. That's right there. Now, I wanted to take and add a dash of glitter. So that's actually what I did right away without even thinking. I'm using our Wink of Stella brush. It's a glimmer brush of clear glitter with a glycerin base. This will also blend your colors. So first of all, I wanna highlight on the woman, her hair with a little dash. Less is more, her shoes right down here the back of her body line. So you really wanna come in and accent the back of her dress, that feminine flair. You wanna feature that. Now, don't forget the gentleman. Feature her hands, the back of him, down to his shoes. It's almost magical when you find that kind of a relationship. Now, we're gonna take and do just some streaks across the color here, adding glitter. I'm trying to avoid that little area I masked off. I know it's got a little schmutz, we'll be okay. 
Some of the most beautiful models are those with imperfections. Cindy Crawford, and I don't even consider her mole an imperfection, but what ifs. When I modeled, I modeled as a kid, um, there was, uh, what do you call it? It, they would criticize your earlobes to everything, right? You're always looking, they're always looking for something. So um, don't let people tear you down. That's all I gotta say. Now, while that's drying, I'm gonna set her aside, um, the couple aside. We're gonna grab our Stampin' Pierce mat. This is my Stampin' Pierce mat, one of my favorite tools from Stampin' Up. Now, this is the sweet little flower one that I had, and I had a yellow one that we did, didn't I? We had one. I move things around while I'm stamping. The joke of it is, good luck finding anything from Jamie. Did I tell you 2.5 seconds? Oh, here's that pink one. So we could do either or. I kind of like the idea of this one. This is the one we just punched right now. Doesn't really matter. Turn her around. Turn them around. This is that great double-sided paper. Now we're going to use our take a pick tool. What we're going to do is utilize the stylus edge. This is the slightly larger stylus. And I'm gonna go in and I'm going to trace while that's drying the edge of the umbrella. I wanna create this round, domed 3D effect without any extra effort. Because an umbrella is never flat. It's always round, it's got texture. I love umbrellas. In California, we don't have an excuse to really use ours very often. But when I was in Seattle visiting, um, or Indiana, I found that I used it a lot more, which was fun <laughs> for California girl. My folks back east um, in the upper northern Midwest are going to be laughing at me, the fact that it's fun to use an uh, umbrella. But we don't get to here. I even have um, puddle jumpers, and, you know, like rain shoes, and I only use them when I'm back east. We don't get to use them. Well, if there's a good rainy day here in California, I will wear them just because it's the only time I get to. Now, that was the floral one, and you can see how it rounded out. Now, we're gonna do the same thing with the cute little pink polka dots. If you know me, you know I'm not a big fan of pink. I know that sounds silly. Um, my besties and one of my daughters absolutely love pink. And it's okay, I don't have to. I enjoy blues and bold jewel tone usually. So if it's a jewel toned pink, I own like fabulous jewel toned colored clothes, but pastels and stuff aren't really usually my gig. Can you tell? Look at this card, I'm just lying. Okay, so we have a couple of great options right here and using the stylus on the um, stamp and pierce mat is a great way to give a rounded image. I think I'm still gonna go with this really pretty floral one just because it's different. Now, utilizing our um, dimensional adhesives, you can see here, and our piece, we're going to turn this over and place three Stampin' Dimensional Adhesives across the back of this umbrella. I wanna keep that vibe of a rounded umbrella. Using your dimensionals will continue that feel. Look for your original pencil line and put it over the top. It's almost like you're peeking in on a little forbidden scene right there. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know, I like it a lot. Hopefully you guys do as well. Now, on this original card, I was using a balmy blue background, which ties to the blue in the designer series paper, but I wanted to brighten this up. We're also gonna use the silver foil edged note cards, just like so. So it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. Yes, I do like sound effects. <laughs> the silver foil edge note cards come in a 20 pack. It's 20 cards, 20 envelopes. It's item number 147900. And it's fabulous because then you get to have some foil thrown in for fun. We're going to take that foil edge note card, fold it, impress it with your finger, and use the bone folder to impress the edge from behind. Just like so. Then we're going to take a piece of um, Daffodil Delight that I already trimmed. I had one on the table. Hopefully this is the one it looks like it is um, that I scored to fit on the inside of this card. I did. So this would be three and three quarters by five inches. That's three and three quarters by five. I'm going to use the snail adhesive. It's a permanent adhesive, so you don't have to go crazy, but I am 
wanting this to stand up, especially if I'm giving it to, oh, there goes my dog, sorry y'all. And then this is that gorgeous piece. It's relatively dry. Look at the glimmer. Rainbows do make you feel like it is um, sparkly outside. Using our snail, we're gonna do all four edges with a nice, firm adhesive line. Because you watercolored, you want it to hold down. And it has a tendency with the water to warp out a little bit. So I don't usually encourage like such a heavy hand with adhesive, but you do want to do that with this project. Boom. Now turn the card over and using the side of your bone folder, impress upon the edge. That's gonna take your adhesive if it's connected to have a firmer connection all the way through. And there you go. A sweet little card, perfect to give out for holidays and love. Now together is the perfect place to be, especially during the holidays, if you want that sort of thing. Um, so using the stays on black ink, I'm going to just accent the corner of this with a greeting. Usually I will have done that before applying it to my card. Together is the perfect place to be. I think so. And I'm so glad you joined us today. This is our uh, basics of stamping. This is teaching you one of the versions of watercoloring using our watercolor pencil and adding a little wow with some glimmer. I hope that the foil and the color impress you. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that this inspires you. Please like and share. Give this away. Sharing is caring. Um, you could also take one of this really cute little I punched this out earlier. Let me see, I had a little handle pre-punched and everything. I like to add something to the inside of the card. And so what I would do is put this on the inside of the card with a little handle like that. That's what I would do. So I'll do that in a little bit and I'll put that on my blog. You can check it out on my blog at gettingcrafty.net. That's gettingcrafty.net. Thanks for joining me. So much variety, so much fun you can do when creating a fun, colorful, love-worthy celebration full of color. I hope that you have a blessed day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.